I'm sure it will all sink in over time. Um, I gotta tell you, it was a little strange coming into town because you've been out with your dogs alone for so long. And you first you start off, you hear the planes, and then you see a couple cars. And it was a little bit sad. I was like, wait a minute, it's over? I'm not gonna be just out on the trail with my dogs? And so it, 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 it's a big accomplishment, but that part hasn't really sunk in. I'm more just a little bit in shell shock about being in town and being it being over, you know? Sounds like you're, you might be going through a little bit of Yukon Quest withdrawal. <laughs> yes, but luckily in three weeks I get to do it all over again on a different trail, so I'm sure <laughs> After, I'm not going to be back out. It's supposed to snow. Do you feel sort of lucky that you've missed out on high winds and heavy snow? Oh, we got some high winds and heavy snow leaving <laughs> Dawson. I, I didn't miss out on anything, you know? I think um, whenever you dance with Mother Nature, you got to be real aware that you're not leading. And I think she took her shots at everybody at some point in time along the trail. Yeah, what was so. the hardest part of the trail for you? You know, it's funny, like the big things that they tell you are going to be hard and miserable. It's not that they're easy, but it's always like little things that catch you a surprise. Um, you know, like Rosebud was gorgeous. You get up there in the Saddleback and it's the full moon and it was just like this magical sight. Um, but then like, you know, the day before there'd been this tiny little glacier overflow that just sent me crawling into the willows, you know, so some of the things that you expected to be horrible weren't and some of the things that you thought, oh, this isn't going to be a problem, just totally knocked you on your butt. You know, I think um, they they were both wonderful and very generous with their encouragement and as veterans had a lot of information to share. And I think uh, the deciding factor was really what made sense, you know, when we were all in Eagle getting ready to boot at 1 o'clock in the morning and the thermometer was like minus 52. You know, you just, it doesn't make sense to go out in that situation. And when conditions warranted it and we were able to, um, you know, make choices that, I think all of us too along the entire time were making the choices that we thought were best for our dog team. And I think that was really the deciding factor more than any kind of are we racing or not. You know, we were all just trying to do the best we could by our dogs. Talk about your dogs. Um, is there a dog in that team? Can I talk you're... about my dogs? Look at those beautiful. I should be petting those dogs. Um, they, they were really amazing. I have mostly small females in there. And, um, they do you just... have a superstar dog that really impressed you this, this race? You know what was really wonderful? I don't have any dogs that let me down. I don't have a superstar because there's no one to complain about. Um, two that I'll point out because I see one camera here. These two little girls back here. Hey, Jody. Hi, Cece. These two little girls. I know they look like sweet little dogs, um, but they eat like horses and they work like horses. These are actually ponies in disguise. And they were just all, you were my little wheels the whole time. Yes. And this dog actually is named Jody, and I think Shannon is the person who named Jody Jody because Dan had liked her as a puppy, and uh, she didn't work out in Shannon's open class sprint team, and so we got her for a distance dog. And you know, I don't think Dan likes to run her because he doesn't like to yell at Jody, but I don't have a problem with it, and she was fantastic. I was watching that interview.